Um, hey guys, this is Tracy from Unclaimed Bands. I'm here with Mariana Matei. 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 Mate. Hey. Sorry about that. Um, from Philly Sound Studios. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for sitting down with us today. Thank you. Thank Glad you. to be here. Um, it's my pleasure to sit down with you and talk with you today. Thank you. Why don't we get started? Sure. Um, how did you get into the uh, music industry? Did you come from a musical family? Uh, well, in a way. I mean, my mother played the accordion, mm -hmm. so I grew up with that in the household. Yeah. And then, you know, of course, we had a piano in the, awesome. in the home, and my brother played piano. So, surrounded by music, you know. Yeah. Up. I've always wanted to learn a piano, but I didn't have the fingers for it. <laughs> yeah, it's never too late. Um, so, how did you start Philly Sound Studio? Philly Sound basically came by accident almost. Mm -hmm. um, so I started as, as a musician. Okay. Then started running my own sound. Mm -hmm. People like that, so I did it for others. Started recording myself. People like that, so I started doing it for others. Right. I had a producer, Drew Raison, at a Big Sky Audio, mm -hmm. who did um, one of my second CD, second or third CD. Um, and we became very good friends. My father's in real estate, and I happened upon this place, so I decided to open my own studio since I was recording people out of my basement. I think yeah. This is a much better place. <laughs> this is a beautiful place. Um, then he started recording here. Mm -hmm. And then after about two years of that, he said, why don't, why don't we just go in partners? Because he's got 30-plus years in the mm -hmm. business. He has a lot of really choice vintage gear. Um, so that was the, the marriage, his, his equipment and my room, and together we're filling A great collaboration. Studios. Awesome. Um, so for people that might not know, why don't you tell me what a producer does? Ah, producer. A lot of people think that it's the person who mixes it, but mm -hmm. it's not. So think of a producer as a director is for a movie. Okay. So you can go to five different producers with the same song and you're going to get five different products. Mm -hmm. um, so the producer's job is really to envision the song in a certain way that stays true to the artist's original concept. Mm -hmm. However, it stays more true to the song and what they're trying to do with the song than what every member of the band would want. Okay. So they should almost always have final say on right. the final sound of right. the song. That's why you would hire a good producer because you like the work that they have done in the past, he or she, um, and you think that they get your music. Okay. And then you really have to release the reins. And that's similar to what I did with Drew. Right. Because I'll tell you, the first time Drew mixed this song for me, I hated it. So there's nothing like I wanted it. <laughs> I can't believe it. Really. And, but I had tested that song prior, mm -hmm. and then I tested his version, and it was off the charts. So I said, you know what? I went back in the studio. I apologized. And every time since then, if he says something, I just shut up and now I did you it. Let it. let him do his yeah, thing. You got to trust, the, you gotta trust yeah. the producer. Sometimes somebody sees something you might not. Trust your producer. <laughs> So, when did you start producing for other people? Was it before? You did actually kind of answer that question before, before the studio. Yeah, I mean, that, that came about because, you know, people, it, it always starts off just, uh, you know, you're mixing your, your friend's band. Right. You know, you have the equipment, you have the knowledge, they want you to do it for cheap, and just like it, it's done today, everybody either does it themselves or they have yeah. somebody who can do it for them. Um, then you start making suggestions, and then mm -hmm. after a while, if they really trust, you know, w what you're saying in the song, then they'll kind of give the reins over to you. Um, but it's a, it's a little bit tricky nowadays because you really got to set that up because people still don't understand what a producer does. Right. And they think, well, you're just going to mix the song and do right. it the way that I want it done, which is a mixing engineer, basically. Mm -hmm. So that's really the, the cutoff. You got a producer, their vision, do what they say. Mm -hmm. Mixer does what you say with right. some suggestions. Okay, I get it. Um, and who are some of the clients you've worked with? Uh, out of Philly Sound, there's a lot in Philly. I mean, you know, Mistletoe Jam's coming up. We have Soraya, they recorded here. We mm -hmm. have John Fay, he recorded here. Mm -hmm. uh, Joey DiTullio, he recorded here. The people, the good thing about Philly Sound Studios is that we're really positioned as a cutting room. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of different producers who work out of here. So if you can't afford rent, you just rent it for the day or for the weekend or for the week. Right. You come in in a great, you know, world-class studio and you record here. The people that I work directly with recently uh, would be Jada J and mm -hmm. Joey DiTullio. They're the ones that I recorded, tracked, produced, and mixed. Okay. I want to ask you, so if somebody's looking for a producer, what sets your studio apart from the rest, and what kind of services you, would you offer them? Well, production, again, is different <coughs> than, than just the studio, mm -hmm. right? The good thing about our studio is that we have low rates, so you can afford to come here. Mm -hmm. You can get that huge, you know, world-class 
studio experience mm -hmm. without having to go with the guy that owns that big studio. Right. The old model was that if you wanted to go to a particular studio, you had to use that producer who owned that studio. Mm -hmm. So, or you would get the interns that he had, mm -hmm. you know, or somebody that would work there, you know, mm -hmm. for a lesser rate. Uh, here, you could get any producer that you want, but still get the sound of this room okay. with that equipment. That's what makes Philly sound so unique is that, you know, you're still going to get a unique product. Mm -hmm. Everything won't sound the same, but everything's going to sound fantastic because of the combination between the equipment and the room. Right. And one last question. With everything you've done um, or you are doing currently, what's the next thing you want to try? Next thing in music? Mm -hmm. um, or it can be outside hmm, of music. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I actually... Uh, Here's a little, uh, I'll, I'll leak a little something out. I'm working with <laughs> some, uh, some other people uh, on a uh, cable TV show mm -hmm. that's actually going to marry a uh, similar interview, mm -hmm. performance, Okay. so music, and food. Awesome. So it's going to be a my cross between things. a cooking <laughs> show. And that's some of my favorite so we're things. Talking, all my favorite things. We're talking, and, uh -huh. and we're also going to position it where we will have the, the real famous people, but mm -hmm. we want to marry that with the people up and coming as well. Right. So that's I don't important. want it to be just the famous people who have already made it, right. but maybe a marriage between those people playing with the other people mm -hmm. who are on their way up. So awesome. I, I lied. Stay I tuned on that. Question. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then what's your, the most important, poll, or most important part of your role as a producer? Um, I think the most important part is staying true to that song. So you have two aspects of a song, right? You have the, mm -hmm. the artist wrote the song and they have something in their head. So you don't want to just discount that. However, it might not be something that is commercially viable for what they want to do with that song. Okay. So what do they want to do? They want it for their fans. The fan know their sound. This is their sound. They want to put it out on an EP. They want to go out and they want to play it and that's it. That's mm -hmm. great. Well, then somebody might come and say, well, I've got this great idea for a song, but I want to position it for a TV commercial or a movie or something else. So now you have to weigh that in. Now, the song should take precedent and the purpose of that song should take precedent mm -hmm. over the original vision. And a lot of artists have, um, I myself am included in this, in this bucket, I can't rethink the song. Mm -hmm. I, I'll always hear it the way that I heard it in my head when I wrote it. But if I want to do something with that song, I'll let that go. Okay. You know, that I'll, makes sense. I'll, I'll stay true. I'll let the song become its own entity and I won't hinder that song because I hear it differently in my head. Mm -hmm. you know? Awesome. So. Well, thank you so much for your time. My it pleasure. was a pleasure. Um, thank you. Everybody, Mariano from Philly Sound Studios. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll be looking for that show. Yes. Stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs>